you know, as I was growing up, I was very fortunate to have my father in my life until I was 44 years old. Then my dad died. You know, he was my, he was my dude, man. He was, he was my guiding light to manhood. He taught me everything I know about manhood. I didn't have to go nowhere to learn nothing about manhood other than this dude right here, Jesse Slick Harvey. Hardest dude ever born. That was why it was really important for me to pass on all the lessons that I learned in my life that I learned from my father to my own sons. I got three sons. Those are my three boys. Uh, today, I got my oldest son right here with me, Broderick. This is Junior, Broderick Stephen Harvey Jr. And I have also, along with him, a group of uh, men from different backgrounds and age groups here. And we're gonna have an open and honest conversation about manhood. So we're calling this segment, This Is What I Taught My Sons. Yeah. I wanna start the conversation with Leonard. Uh, Leonard is feeling some type of pressure to be the man of the family. Leonard, what's going on? So pretty much my family is pretty dominated by females. Like, you know, I'm from inner city, Philadelphia. And I just feel a lot of pressure because I feel like I have to be the man for my family. See, I was, I was raised by my grandmother. My mom was deported when I was four. For me, I just want to be that patriarch for my family, that provider for my family. And, and I feel a lot of pressure from that for my community because in my community, a lot of men are in prison. So my question is, how do I deal with that pressure and, and propel it for the future family that I ultimately want to have? Single mothers raise great students law-abiding citizens, God-fearing men, to learn respect to women, how to open doors, how to treat a woman. The disadvantage of not having a father is a young man without a father or a role model is like an explorer without a map. When you don't have a father, you know how to feel in that is. So when you become a parent, number one thing you gotta do is the opposite of what your daddy did, the direct opposite. Once you do that, if he wasn't there, you gotta be there. You missed him, don't let your kids miss you. You can learn manhood from other men. He ain't gotta be your daddy. But you know what good, a good man look like? Do you see this man over here that's taking care of his family, that's making it work, that then bought a house, out there cutting the grass, washing the car, taking the kids to soccer practice? You see a man out there doing that? He, he can give you some advice. Manhood ain't money. <laughs> manhood is a series of actions. That's the best thing you can do, man. That's the best thing. Now, let, for, by a show of hands, how many of you fellas in here feel the pressure to take care of your family? Okay, that's good. You want that. You, it's, it's pressure, being a man. You, you got to drink the pressure. Just take little sips of it. But you got, you got to drink all of it, though. You might not be able to throw it all back at one time, but take sips of this pressure. Until you didn't finish, just drink it. This is what it is, man. We men, ain't we? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. They ain't finna yeah. change. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's go to Byron. Byron's got a parenting question. I have three sons, um, and uh, young men that I actually raised to be very respectable. I'm, I'm a good Southern man coming out of New Orleans, and um, they're interested in getting into rap music. And so they've uh, um, uh, been dibbling and dabbling. And so I finally actually heard some of their music. And the first thing I heard, man, was just, you know, cuss words and, you know, <laughs> disrespect about women. And I'm, I'm like, whoa, 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 I mean, where is this coming from? Because you guys were raised in the suburbs. You've never been, you never been into inner city or anything like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, where is this coming from? <laughs> you know, and I, and I get it. Socially, this is what people are doing, right? Socially, they're, they're, they're mimicking other things and they're, and they're following the trends of what other people are doing. But it, there has to be some kind of... Balance okay, there. well, my son is here. My son well, is, is musically inclined, so I'm gonna let him talk. You know, and, and I am a fan of current hip hop and all that stuff. Um, you're, I feel like your sons are probably, they're, they're chasing this image, right? These rappers put out this image of money, this flashy lifestyle, and it's a lot of kids that are getting on nowadays. You know, you can be 16 and you put out one song on, on a platform and you know, you stream and you get a million hits. Right. So they're looking at it from that lens. You did a great job raising your sons. You know, I could tell that about you. We talked backstage and um, they're, they're not on the wrong path. You didn't go wrong with anything. They're trying stuff out. Yeah, it might not be on brand with what you taught them, but they, they know right from wrong at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, that's cool. That's cool when your son can say stuff like that, because, like, look, man, they make decisions all the time I don't agree with. Technology has changed parenting just like that. Because it used to be real simple, man. If my mom and them didn't want me to do something, they tell them I can't go down there, I can't go down there, I miss it. You tell them they can't go down there now, now they get one of their boys and they FaceTime them, they there. You didn't do a bad <laughs> job. It's just the world has shifted. See, all this calling women out bitches and, and all this hearing music, that's our fault. We were so busy trying to make the money, we forgot to teach. So the generation behind us, that generation, we forgot to teach. We forgot to show them that cool should, we should have never let cool go out of style. Y'all replace cool with hard. But you're doing good though, like my son said. Yeah. You've done a great job as a parent. Let, let's see if they can do the music, but just clean it up in a way. Right. You know, they, if they have the true talent, they could say whatever and it'll come out great. Thank right, they, they can't disrespect women in the music. Yeah. No, we gotta put a stop to that. Tommy, what's your question? Uh, so naturally, I feel like I have it together, uh, but every now and then I go through lulls of depression where I feel down. Uh, and as a man, I feel like I should always portray an image of strength. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, how do I deal with my emotions without looking weak? The only way I know to negate negativity or depression is with gratitude. Mm -hmm. See, people don't understand how important this is. See, what causes you to get into to low points and negativity is when you focus in on what you don't have, what you wanted to happen that didn't happen, and something that happened that had a result that you didn't care for. Your feelings are a barometer of your thoughts. If you feel down and low any time during the day, like it's dark or depressing, all you gotta do is trace what you've been thinking about the last 20 minutes. So now, how do you negate that? You negate that with gratitude. This is a lesson that I teach to people in my motivational speeches and stuff. Gratitude erases negativity. Joy and depression cannot reside in the same space. You feel me? All right, let's go to the next question. Uh, Daniel was raised by a single mom and has a question about manhood. So my mom raised me and uh, my dad's never been there. And uh, my mom, she tried her best, but it's a lot of stuff about manhood that she can't teach me. So my question to you is how do I become or how do I learn how to be a man if I have no man influence in my life? See, the problem when a father walks out of these dudes' lives is there's a hole in his soul the shape of his father. Here's the deal, single mothers. Every boy is going to emulate some man somewhere. He can be a good man or he could be a bad man. You got to hair up and get a good man in front of him. You don't have to be, you don't have to be the one you dating. I ain't saying you gotta go out and find a man that becomes his daddy and all this here. You just got to help get a young man pointed in his direction. And all you need is somebody older. Go ahead. My name is LaVon, I was your age, I was 19, I'm 26 now. When I, when I was really, like you, just wondering why or what can I do to be more of a man or find an example. And like, just like Steve said, it's really gonna be another person, another man that you have no idea because you're so used to not receiving love from a man, you don't know how to be open to receiving it. So now you have to believe that another male can teach you what your dad didn't. Okay. Hi, my name is Keith Craig. Um, my father left my mother and I and my uh, baby sister when I was very young. So when I got of age, I, uh, it was age 17, my mom didn't want to sign the, uh, the document, but she signed I listed in the United States Army to go because we needed money. We were homeless for a year. What I'll say to you is, I, I went seeking for my mentor. Mm -hmm. Now, you won't, you won't find that one thing in that one individual. You, you'll have multiple mentors or multiple people you can find guidance from. And you just got to go out there, you know, think about what it is that you want, want, want to be, uh, and the things that you need, and create a plan, build a plan to reach that platform. Yeah. But don't use this as an excuse. That's my number one thing for you today is, don't allow this, this, um, this absence of your father to be a hindrance from you achieving all of your dreams. Right. It's still right. away. Okay. Let me ask you something. Where you, uh, where, where you live? Um, South Central. Uh, who lives here in LA? <laughs> who gonna mentor him? We got my number two. We got my number two. 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 Two
Okay, now, you got all these men said they'll mentor you, they'll help you. See, that's what we gonna do for you. We gonna get you some men in your life. See, men, we know what it is to be a man. We know the way, and it ain't easy. Nah. Whoa, no, whoa, no, it's not easy. But we know what it is. But these men, see, I didn't ask, no, I didn't ask them which one of y'all make enough money to mentor. I didn't say which one of y'all famous enough to mentor. The greatest men I ever know ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. The greatest men I ever met, Martin Luther King was not a rich man. Come on, man, this was just the greatest. <laughs> My father was not a rich man, he was just the greatest. So this dude, men of you, this dude, this, you get all their numbers. My son, you in South Central, I got dudes, man, that we know how to grab each other, because we know the way. All us been 19. Mm -hmm. You the young dude in the group. We're gonna put our arms around you, and we're gonna get you where you trying to go to. Yeah. See, man, look, everything happened for a reason. This an opportunity. You know, man, look, you ain't got to worry. It's a whole lot of dudes ain't had their daddy. But it's a whole lot of dudes up here to know how that feel. Mm -hmm. Men don't have these opportunities to talk. Because where we from, man, we black men. We men of color. This, 100%. our culture is hard. Latino men, hell, men, period. White men, it's hard. You get around other dudes, it's hard, man. We just men, we ain't supposed to cry. We ain't supposed to be hurt. We ain't supposed to, what? Amir uh, wants his children to be raised in a two-parent home. Amir, explain what's going on. I have two kids. I grew up without my father and my mother. Bounced around foster care group homes until I was 18 years old, until I joined the military. So it's important, imperative for me, for my kids to have that father figure and that mother figure. And me and my kid's mom, we don't have the best relationship, but we live together. I know my kids aren't seeing the healthiest relationship every day, but in the back of my mind, I want them to have both parents. So what should I do? Okay, see, that's situation? easy for me, because yeah. I've been in that situation. It's not good for the kids to see an unhealthy relationship, because if they see it for an extended period of time, that's what they're going to duplicate. They're going to duplicate an unhealthy relationship. I really understand the dilemma you in. Me and his mom ain't together. But this my son. I'm his daddy. That, that's what I got to be, his dad. I don't have to stay with his mom. It didn't work out. And it wasn't his mother's fault, and I've said this many times. I was too young at the time. I wasn't the man I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And so I made some bad decisions along the way. He resented the fact that I left, but. I had to go and become who I am today. Right. I wasn't gonna be that in Cleveland, but at the end of the day, I had to come to my children and go, look, man, this is a decision I made as a man for us to sink or swim. Now, I'm not saying you have to leave her, but either y'all gonna go to counseling and get it right and work through it, or y'all got to go. Now, I ain't pushing divorce, but I ain't finna sit nowhere in misery. I, I'm not. I don't expect no woman to either. All right, let's go to Michael, who's struggling with long-term relationships. Michael, what's going on? Yes, uh, my parents got divorced early on, um, really early on, and my father essentially started uh, his new life without me. Um, and my mother was my best friend growing up, but you know, without a father figure in the house, it, it was lonely at times, and she worked long hours which now I'm thinking may have led to some communication issues I have in relationships. Um, and my girlfriend actually got me to message my half-sister online who didn't know about me for 18 years. And she messaged me back and it was just so wonderful. And now I'm thinking maybe I should see if I can get in touch with him. But I, I just, that would, that would devastate my mom. You know, she was the one that raised me. But I don't know, what, what, what do you think, Steve? Okay, I see you shaking your head. It's, it's not gonna jeopardize anything. It's not gonna change anything between you and your mother. And, and I know this firsthand. I didn't really have my dad full time into my life until I was 16, right? They were moving to Atlanta and they said, hey, brother, we want you to move with us because we really want to bring this family together. Now in my mind, I've been living in Cleveland my whole life. I've been living with my mom. It's been me and my mom. That's it. In the back of my mind, I'm like, no, it's gonna hurt my mom. But 
At 16, I knew that's what I needed as a man. I needed that connection with him. Right. So, so I 100% stand by you going to open up that conversation and it, it's not gonna change anything between you and your mother. It's not. She's gonna feel it some type of way. My mom felt a type of way when I left. Oh, why, why are you going? He hasn't been here. He wasn't here 16 years. Yeah, I got all that, but I know that's what I need. And I know that's what you need too. That's what we need as men. Just like how he wants to open up that door and, and ask for help. This is you, you opening up that door and you got it right there. You can hop online and do it. You got it, man. you got that. You know, man, let me, let me say this to you too. Like my son said, you don't know what the decision is, what your father was doing at the time. Cause your mother and father don't work. That don't mean y'all can't work. Right. She might feel a little some kind of way. What you reaching out to him for? Cause he your father and you feel empty without him. That's why. See, sometimes when you grow up, you need to hear both sides. Yeah. Mm. See, you gotta hear both sides. <laughs> you gotta have this conversation with your father. We've had this conversation. He had to understand what my decision that I made at 25, come on, man, come on, 25? I got twins at 25. What I'm doing making decisions. Do you know, man, that at my daughter's, his oldest sister's wedding, at the father-daughter dance, uh, I chose Earth, Wind & Fire's uh, Be Ever Wonderful. We danced a whole record and stood there and cried for five minutes because I had spent my entire life trying to make up to, for the mistakes I had made as a young man. But you gotta understand, you gotta forgive your fathers, because they human too. Mm. They made mistakes. Mm. They made big mistakes, and some dudes don't know how to come back from the mistake. But, but know this though, they life is in pain without you. Reach out and go, hey man, this is me now, look here. Look here, this is what you didn't raise. But let me tell you yeah. who I am, though. Right, right. Let me introduce myself to you. I'm a father now. I got two kids. My kids gonna know me. They gonna know me because I didn't know you. But I love you, and I forgive you what you did to me. I just need you to tell me why you did it so I can hear your side of the story. Because we men now. You won't answer. You ain't no little kid. I had to explain to him what happened. This is what happened, man. This is the decision I made. He told me one day, he said, you know what, Dad, I get it now. He said, you ain't belong to us. You belong to the world. He said, that's different. My father belongs to the world. He said, you ain't just mine. I wish you was, but you ain't. He said, but you Uncle Steve to a whole lot of people. Right. He said, but I'm glad you got me now. We good, you feel me? <laughs> hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're gonna enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.